My name is David Gagnon. I'm one of the Vancouver Lego Clubbers from Vancouver, Canada. We're standing in front of the wall. And um, the idea for this came around the end of season four, a couple of years ago, when the television season ends with this sort of grand battle where all the, the wild people of the north attack the wall. And we were inspired to sort of try and capture that moment. Although you'll notice as we move around that there are bits from different timelines and different episodes, um, and even a few things from the books that don't happen in the movies, and, uh, and things like that. Uh, and this is Game of Thrones, right? Absolutely. So this is the, the big ice wall from Game of Thrones. Uh, and in Game of Thrones, the, uh, the Southerners in this sort of uh, epic moment of xenophobia build a giant ice wall to keep all the North people out of the South. Um, there's a, a little political commentary here to be made, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. But uh, this was written and filmed long before Trump suggested his wall. Um, so we, we got the idea and in Game of Thrones, the ice wall is the largest man-made structure in this universe. So when we were thinking of building something from Game of Thrones, we thought, why not go big, right? We'll build the biggest structure in Game of Thrones. Um, looking around online, we saw a few people had already done uh, the ice wall, but nobody had done it on a sort of big minifigure scale, trying to flesh it out and detail it. Uh, on this level. So we spent a lot of time talking about scale, how we were going to build something that would seem big enough, um, but still be viable. And we settled on this, which is five Lego base plates tall. Um, it's about, uh, you know, four and a half feet tall for the wall. Um, and we had a lot of conversations around scale, but um, really, I guess what it came down to was we wanted minifigures to really feel dwarfed by it and we wanted people themselves to feel dwarfed by it when they saw it at an event and so the wall is taller than the average person maybe taller than anybody in the room um, when it's sitting up on a table so people really feel like they're looking at something grand when they come in and um, we couldn't really go bigger because of part limitations and, and cost limitations and we couldn't really go smaller um, because it wouldn't have looked right and l referring back to the the source material the book describes the wall as being 700 feet tall so if it was really minifigure scale it would actually be four times taller than what you're seeing here but coming back to the issues of scale we if we had built it four times taller we'd be scraping the ceiling in this uh, exhibit hall, we would have needed ladders to set it up, and it would have cost $100,000 in bricks to build it, so it wasn't going to happen. Um, hopefully you guys will be able to get a shot of the inside framework, but um, once we'd sort of settled on a scale, it was time to come up with a design. And what we thought of was just using a really simple Technic skeleton, um, like a series of boxes built out of Technic beams, and then taking Lego base plates, covering them in white, and then just sticking them onto the Technic skeleton. So maybe in a minute here, I'll pop one of the plates off so you guys can get uh, a look at how the thing is built. And uh, after that, it's really just a lot of detail. So while it's big, it's really quite simple. Um, the wall came together probably in, let's say 60 or 70 build hours shared among three of us, um, right in the middle of my Lego room and it took up all the floor space in my Lego room. Uh, and we were kind of like walking around it for a long time. And um, apart from that, we built stuff separately. So I prepared a lot of the landscaping and the trees. One of the other builders, Keith, uh, Keith Reed did Castle Black. And then our third builder, Dave Geddes, uh, did the top uh, battlements for the wall. And then some of the really nice details like the weirwood tree and the mammoths and the giants. And the first time it all came together was at Brick Can. Uh, the first Lego convention in Vancouver that we had in April 2006 and so we brought all our pieces together and it took us a long time to make it all work um, but we did it just in time for public hours and then of course the last couple of days here we brought it all together a second time it was so much easier the second time and we actually made it quite a bit bigger here at BrickCon too so we've got a larger table and a larger space allotment so we stretched out the landscaping we put out a lot more trees and a lot more minifigures um, so about 500 minifigures uh, on the display right now yeah. 
Well, I think you guys did an amazing job with this. It's so impressive, just the scale of it and all the details as well. Something I really like is these trees. Can you talk a little bit more about that, kind of the design of those? Yeah, absolutely. So looking at these cheese trees, uh, we can't take credit for this. A few people did it before us. Um, and it all started when the pick-a-brick wall got both the one-by-one -one brick um, with studs on four sides and the sand green cheese wedge. And of course, you know, the rest is history, right? If you pop a thousand of these together, um, you get a branch and then you take a, a column and you alternate one by one brick with studs on four sides and then a one by one brick with no extra studs and you just work your way up. And of course there's a couple of different versions. People have built these in different ways. Uh, people have done some with, uh, like if you go over to this higher density tree over here, this one's using a slightly different technique so that you've got eight branches sticking out of every level instead of four. So you get a much thicker look and really you mix them up and it all looks fantastic. Um, and I'm sure there's probably other techniques that people have come up with to do the inner core to get slightly different uh, branch setups. Right. And now this has a great kind of round base around it. So we've seen this side over here. What's on the, what's on the other side of, of the, the base and on the other side of the wall here? So coming around here to the north side, uh, what we're seeing on this side is the forest and the, uh, the hearth tree that's here in the forest. Um, and so this is roughly, in terms of the timeline, this is the end of book four, the end of season four, where all the wildlings of the north uh, are coming to attack the gate. And they're all of the, of the mindset that they're all going to die. In the, in the winter that's coming. So they're trying to do a mass migration south, but of course the wall is in their way, so they get the idea that they're all gonna work together, mammoths, giants, humans, everybody, and they're gonna bust down the gate and start moving south. And so there's this massive battle that erupts in front of the gate um, as the Night's Watch, who are uh, pledged for life to protect the wall from the northerners, are dropping barrels of fire and raining arrows down on the wildlings who are charging relentlessly at the gate, uh, using their mammoths to try and rip the gate off the hinges, using giants to try and lift the gate. Um, they'll do anything, right, to, to get south. And of course, they're climbing the wall as well. And we see that at many parts in the, or several parts during the Game of Thrones series and books. We see people climbing up and over the wall um, in this sort of like epic feat of 700 foot ice climb um, to get up and over the top. Um, I noticed over here you've got kind of a, a cool little scene, which is them uh, shooting the show sort of with a, a camera set up and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. We felt we had to add a film crew in here um, just to give, it that, uh, to give it that little Easter egg, right? Uh, and of course there are other things to be found too that have nothing to do with Game of Thrones that are just sort of tossed in. Um, and, uh, you know, they're just in there for fun. Um, but the film crew is there just to remind people that, um, well, whatever, right? Sorry, I'm not being very eloquent. I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, so you got, you got it there because they were shooting the whole TV show and all of that. And can you talk a little bit more about the minifigs here as well? Because I noticed you've got maybe some custom, is that kind of capes and stuff on, on some of these figs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not opposed to uh, a little bit of customization here and there. So I've got a few Brick Forge weapons mixed in here and I've got a lot of capes that I cut out myself. Um, I printed some patterns that looked like sewn leather and that looked like um, sort of woven bark, things that would the wildlings might be making with found materials and I cut out a couple of dozen capes and added them on to, for the most part, just basic Lego City minifigures, just as a way to get more uh, sort of bulk into the population of wildlings. There's only a handful of Lego figures that actually look like wildlings, so we've got a whole bunch of the orcs from the Lord of the Rings series here with the heads swapped out. We've got a whole bunch of the uh, Inuit ice fisher from uh, Collectible Minifigures Series 3 with a couple of parts swapped out, and then a whole bunch of regular sort of castle figures, a couple of Robin Hood parts, really anything that we could throw together to look like people who live far north in a foresty environment without a lot of metal work. Yeah, that's really neat. I think it came together quite nicely. So is it possible to show the inside there? I know you mentioned earlier possibly showing some of the Technic on the inside. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you guys want to get a little uh, video snippet of the gate opening, I could do that. Um, and then I can pop a wall panel off for you to have a look at what it looks like inside. So. 
the gate absolutely works and it's movable and of course we won't leave it open like that or the wildlings will just start swarming in there and that would be kind of problematic um, at least for this part of the story and which panel do you want me to pull something that you guys whichever one makes it not fall fall apart yeah. <laughs> this one's already halfway off so let's take this one off right here there you go so the wall is basically completely hollow there's uh, about a thousand technic pieces inside building a framework and then about another 10,000 white pieces to skin the outside of the frame um, for the camera there if you go in from the back as well you'll get a much more interesting view um, like right down the inside of the frame and uh, I'll pop this back the outside of the wall is uh, about 30 Lego base plates all covered in white uh, on each side 60 in total and then another six across the top also skinned in white 